Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. What did you think about the uh, about the debate? I think you said that uh, you were you were on that panel for the, uh, for like reactions to the debate or something, right? Was it oh yeah. yeah, yeah. So what did you think about that whole thing? <clears throat> there uh, literally nothing got done. Mm -hmm. Nothing, nothing got done. There was no nobody got an answer mm -hmm. to any important question during that debate. Um, I was oddly surprised at how well Joe Biden actually did uh, mm -hmm. as far as his articulation. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I got to You got to wonder, because in the past, you know, few times that we've seen him on any kind of live TV or social media, the guy's been mashed potato brains. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, how did he come, you know, how did he come from that, you know, and get to this sort of articulate phase mm -hmm. during the debates? And so it kind of makes me wonder, you know, what in the Houston Astros is mm -hmm. going on here, <laughs> you know? And I think they, I think they, one, gave him, they let him rest, it looks like. And two, they probably had him pumped up on some good juice um, from what I saw, from what I saw of that. Yeah, he was, he seemed well rested. Um, Trump obviously was well rested, but, uh, you know, it's the, it got combative. It got combative uh, real fast, and I don't know what, like, I'm not really sure what anyone expected. I expected it to be combative. I don't know. No, they're going to have a fist fight in the Chili's parking lot for yeah. debate, too, is what I hear, but yeah. I'm really, um, I'm with one that. of the things, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm pretty excited about, mm -hmm. I want to see the vice presidential debate. Okay. I want to see how Pence and Harris mm -hmm. deal with each other. Um, okay. I think that's going to be I think that's going to be super interesting. But, hmm. you know, I've, lo I've lost a lot of faith in these leaders. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've lost a lot of faith in, in the things that they can accomplish. And so I'm just kind of on a campaign in my own life, mm -hmm. you know, in, in, in the people that I can influence to mm -hmm. we need to quit. We need to quit farming out our community obligations to corrupt mm -hmm. politicians and people that don't give. Mm -hmm. And we need to start digging into our communities and, and protecting our people. I don't think this is just uh, my uh, humble opinion, which is probably not humble at all. I don't know, <laughs> whatever. But um, <laughs> I don't think that any politician is is going to save you. I don't think anyone else is going to save you. That's what really started me seriously down this two uh, A path. I came to a realization: the only person who could save you is yourself. You know, and that if you can't defend something, you don't have it. So if you think you have a life, you don't have it if you can't defend it. If you think you've got a family or a home or material things, whatever it is that you think, if you think you have freedom, you don't have that unless you can defend it. You yourself, because when when, uh, you know, when the rubber meets the road, I'm trying to be nice since we're in the early part of the show here, when things when it really comes down to it. Right. It's just going to be you. And whoever else wants to take your freedom away from you, your life away from you, your your possessions or whatever it is. And never, ever is there a scenario where politicians, no politician, right, is actually trying to fix your problems. That's not they're not in the business of that. Because if they if they fixed problems, what would, if they fixed all the problems, what would, what would be their job? Exactly. Exactly. You know. Yeah. And another thing to consider too is, you know, even if even if most of the politicians that we had in this country were great and wonderful and not corrupt people, it it's not about whether they can't they still can't save you even if they wanted to because it's physically impossible. And and this is one of the things that I said when I testified in the gun rights hearings that came through Dallas, Texas last October. Mm -hmm. I was like physics dictates it literally comes down to science at the end of the day. Physics dictates that no no body can purposefully respond to a situation of duress, whether it be home invasion, active shooter, whether it be carjacking, rape, sexual assault, whatever you want, nobody can do it purposefully except the people that are already there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, help Absolutely. might be on the way, but how long? Yeah. You know what I mean? And so it doesn't, it doesn't come down to how you feel even mm -hmm. necessarily. It comes down to what can actually be done in the realm of science. And, and that's where physics and kinesiology and things like that come into play. And you are the only one that can save you. You are the only one that can assist your family and, or, or, and or the people who are around you mm -hmm. because you're already there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> I I think that when we look at the the whole subject of voting, I believe you know I'm a naturalized citizen. I'm definitely going to vote, you know, and I think everyone out there should vote. I'm not going to tell people how to think or who to vote for. I could tell you, you know, who I vote for, or whatever, if you care to know. But ultimately, you need to go out and you need to do that. And you need to go back to the business of fixing all your problems, like you're saying. Whatever problems you have, it all starts with you. You know, so even, you know, a lot of people like to blame everyone else for everything that's happening to them. And in some circumstances, that's true. But I always try to divide people down. I, or no, I don't try to divide people. I shouldn't say that. I think people fall into two basic categories, the deliberate and the accidental. Okay, the accidental person, everything is happening to them. Nothing is within their control. Nothing is their fault. <laughs> All of this stuff is just being done to them. The deliberate person, even if they mess up, they take a deliberate look at what they did wrong. If they're in the wrong situation, they say, I'm in the wrong place. I shouldn't have been here. This is this is on me. And they try to do things about it. And they're and the behavior changes. Exactly. The behavior changes. Yeah, absolutely. That, so mm -hmm. the mistake isn't really the problem. It's what you do afterwards. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the issue. Mm -hmm. And so we see a lot from. Uh, people in society now, you know, what can the government do for me? What can the government give me? Mm -hmm. How am I supposed to be taken care of? Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of like the, it's kind of like a, a government's job or a government's, you know, reason for being has sort of mutated and we need to get back to the original plan and the government's job is not to keep us individually safe. Mm -hmm. Now a country as a whole, right. From foreign enemies and things like that. That's why we have a military. Mm -hmm. But the, the government's job is not to keep us individually safe. It's to keep us free. Mm -hmm. Their job is to keep us free. Mm -hmm. And so if we if we want that, which we should want freedom, then it comes with a degree of responsibility for oneself. Mm -hmm. And so COVID, this whole situation that we've had in 2020 with COVID has really shown me who is to your point, accidental and who is deliberate. Mm -hmm. And so we've had, we have a lot of people that are sucking on the teat of the government because they don't know how to be deliberate. Nobody's ever taught them how to be deliberate. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think that, uh, and I think there are a lot of people who are upset about this. Maybe we don't see it in the media, right? Uh, for sure. We know there's people who are just complying <laughs> and, uh, Oh, whatever they tell me to do, I'm going to do it. We see those people wearing the masks in the car and all that kind of stuff, right? I'm not trying to tell anyone what to do. If you're in a situation and or you, first of all, you know what's up with you. You know if you're at a high risk for something and all of that kind of stuff. But when, when there's people who are just going out of their way to comply with everything and not questioning the fact that the government has no plan on ending any of this, and we've been through this kind of stuff before. It's not like some aliens landed and gave us a special alien flu that we never heard of and they're body snatching us or something crazy like that. This is literally <laughs> something we've been dealing with on this planet. Life literally comes from a virus, right? I mean, it's, it's what we're dealing with is elemental and it's never going away. Never. We, we can never do anything about it. And if we're at this state where we're like, oh, my God, the government has to tell us everything to do, all the stuff we were up to. I think we were thriving before that, you know, um, and, and maybe if we want to put it in this in, in, in this light of the conversation we're having, maybe we were just thriving accidentally. Because everything was going fine at that point and then everyone decided everyone decided it's okay to flush everything now for me and you because of what we did like i found myself busier than ever like not really getting a chance to take any kind of breaks i've worked through this whole thing i've come in I'm, my studio separate from where we live lola works in healthcare. she's worked all the time you know um and we've just been going 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 but there's lots of people out there that were fine with shutting everything down going on unemployment even when the companies are saying come back to work they're like no i don't want to go back to work they're giving me more money to stay home you know so it seems like there's folks out there that wanted this to be done and i just asked myself how many of us really are upset with this and and you know want the government to get out of our way and let us go back to taking the risks we always took well 
I, I agree with that. I agree with that completely. Um, I have, you know, I had about two weeks off, um, and mm-hmm. got a lot done in the two weeks, you know, mm-hmm. clean out my garage, all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> you know, the things that, you know, you're supposed to do, mm-hmm. you know, idle hands are the devil's playground, right. you know? And, uh, so then I, but then I started to get a lot of requests from people that were like, look, I think this virus is complete BS. Mm-hmm. Um, not that it's not real. Mm-hmm. It's just, you know, the numbers aren't adding up. Can you come to my house and teach me? You know? Mm-hmm. So I did a lot of dry fire training mm-hmm. with people, um, during COVID until the ranges kind of started to open back up because mm-hmm. our attorney our attorney general had to deem ranges essential so the retail spaces at firearms facilities and you know gun retail spaces were always essential but we you know our ag had to deem ranges oh, essential okay. so once and they you're in, started you're in texas for people if, if yeah. you guys don't know out there okay yeah so mm-hmm. when the ranges started to open up i was you know i was still you know getting more and more requests for for training and things like that um and and never once uh, there, there's been two instances where I've worn a mask during this whole thing. I've never wore one to the grocery store. I didn't wear one to the gym. Mm-hmm. You know, then gyms closed down and I had to be at home mm-hmm. uh, working out. But um, I, I didn't wear a, a mask in public anywhere except when I got on an airplane. Mm-hmm. Um, and today when I went to a funeral. Oh, wow. Because that's just to me going like going to the funeral is not the place mm-hmm. where I'm going to bring up the mask issue. Yeah. OK, yeah. Um, so I, I can be, you know, I can be sympathetic and empathetic uh, and, you know, kind of, you know, know when to bring that up and when not to. But I ain't wearing a mask to the grocery store. Mm-hmm. I'm not wearing one to the mall. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, most people didn't say anything to me about it. Um, I had the people at Starbucks said something to me about it once. Uh, when I walked in and she was like, do you have a mask? And I was like, no, I don't. She mm-hmm. said, well, we, ca- we kind of require masks. And I was like, well, I did a mobile order, so I just need to get my stuff and go. Mm-hmm. And also I'm a free American. Mm-hmm. So you can either, you know, you can give me a refund on my stuff and I'll go somewhere else and get my coffee. Mm-hmm. Or you can just hand me my stuff and I'll be gone in two seconds and then we won't have to deal with it anymore. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's, it's, there's, there's really no end in sight for this. Mm-hmm. Um, it only took, it literally only took them a matter of weeks to turn these people into sheeple. I mean, I've seen masks out now more than ever before. Everybody has one on. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying don't wear one. I'm just saying that don't be afraid to exercise your choice either because if this isn't something that you want to be mandated to do, okay? Mm-hmm. So like if, if I had a if I had a student that asked me to wear a mask during a lesson, mm-hmm. I would probably I would probably do that. Mm-hmm. That's just to me that's a little bit of customer service if that's what they want. Okay. But in general, I'm not complying with this crap. It doesn't make any sense. And but the problem is that we have a country full of people who don't really know how to critically think anymore. Mm-hmm. So the people like me and you who are going this doesn't make any sense. The numbers aren't adding up. I'm okay with taking a little bit of risk because I take care of myself and I'm healthy. That's also a big thing, too, is nobody wants to be the person. And this is going to be real controversial, Mm -hmm. what I'm about to say. But no, nobody wants to be the person that's out on social media or in public going, you know what? If you're high risk, probably seven times out of 10, it's because you did it to your damn self. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to take the three out of 10 people who who totality of circumstances determines that they didn't do this to themselves. Mm -hmm. They got cancer or they got, you know, certain kinds of cancer that you just get. Okay. Or they have a disease that they couldn't help. Right. But seven, I bet you seven out of 10 people who are high risk did it to themselves because we're a country of people that doesn't, that we don't take care of ourselves anymore. Mm -hmm. So we don't, it's too, it's too hard. It's too labor intensive. It's too much effort to eat right and drink enough water and make sure that you're getting some exercise. I mean, it's, this is not, let's let's also, let's also remember, I mean, if, if it was really true that everyone who is overweight is going to die, then half of America would already been dead. I mean, I'm a, I'm a big dude, so I'm not even trying. I'm not trying to talk about anyone. I'm, I'm a big guy, but it's kind of ironic, and and all of us can stand to lose some weight, myself included. But it's very ironic that there was this thing of oh, if you're if you're fit and you're healthy, that you know you'll be okay. But then don't go to the gym and don't go outside. You know, so not, none of that can actually make sense. None of that actually makes sense, right? If you're telling people that that's somehow a difference, and I'm not saying that it isn't. I think ultimately the studies that the CDC put out themselves said that most people who died, they said, what was it, 94% had multiple things. So yes, if you're overweight and you're not doing anything about it, that's one thing. But it wasn't that, it wasn't one thing. It was multiple things. 
So maybe you're overweight, maybe you have diabetes, okay, you get this thing. Or maybe you have, you know, three things and you get this and you can't uh, come out from it. My father's in New York, he's uh, an old dude, first of all, you know, has several different issues and he got COVID-19, he's fine, you know. Um, I think that's just from being an old bastard, but, you know, I mean, hey, whatever <laughs> whatever it takes that keeps you alive, good for you. <laughs> You know, but I think so. it's, it's 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 gotten to the point of of ridiculousness. You know, mm. I was on board for mm. the first like three weeks when we didn't know what we were up against, mm. and that's the time when you need to be sympathetic and empathetic and go, okay, look, we're gonna mm. shut it down. Hopefully, people have a savings account. If you don't, the government's gonna step in and help you a little bit. Like mm. I get that, that's fine. But you know, when you're a month and two months out and the numbers aren't making sense, it's time to it's time we can't crash an economy mm -hmm. over over this. We just can't do it because then everybody suffers. Yeah. Okay. But then a secondary, you know, a byproduct of this is that people in positions, uh, in certain positions, have become emboldened to be punk to people, mm -hmm. right? So my my really good friend Angela got kicked off an American Airlines flight this week. Mm -hmm. Her daughter her daughter is at the Citadel, mm -hmm. right? They went to her ring ceremony mm -hmm. and they were flying back and this mom who's this mom of five on an American Airlines flight was getting her ass chewed by some flight attendant who thinks that she's, you know, the president mm -hmm. and she and because her two kid her 2-year-olds, twins I believe, their masks fell off while they were sleeping. Mm -hmm. And so I guess they're getting on this connecting flight and the chick's like, you can't get on the flight because you broke the rules. And so and my friend Angela's wow. like, hey, that's – yeah, she's like, that's not fair. They were freaking sleeping and they're two. Mm -hmm. So the Texas – you know, the mandate says that, you know, kids under 10 don't have to deal with this and you're just being – and mm -hmm. they kicked her and her two kids off the flight. So she had to go rent a car and drive 15 hours home to get her kids back so they could go to school. Yeah. Well, you know, that's just like, to what? prove their authority over us. But all of that, all of that was given away. That stuff was given away after 9-11. So what you're seeing happening with uh, flight attendants, that happened after 9-11, right? And, and if you look at a lot of things, I was looking at, um, I think Rogan had Snowden on. And Snowden said that people in America don't realize that uh, Patriot Act and all those things, when they went into effect, we no longer have a constitution. And he's not wrong. And so it, that was something that I had to research and learn about mm -hmm. because 9-11, I was like 19 years old when that happened. So I wasn't like a big traveler. I didn't mm -hmm. really have a lot of flights under my belt at that time. So I don't really remember a time when I've flown and the TSA hasn't been in existence mm -hmm. or, you know, or the Patriot Act hasn't been in existence because I was still a teenager you know, mm -hmm. when this happened. So he's, he is absolutely not wrong. It has completely stepped on the Constitution. Yeah. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.